Hi everybody, it's Kasha from the Niagara on the Lake Library. Um, we're just about to get started with Steam Storytime. I'm just getting a couple more things set up. So I'm a couple minutes early. But thanks for joining us today. Thanks for joining me today. Let's see if I can get this to work. Nope. Okay. There we go. That's better. a great Wednesday morning so far. Um, my name is Kasha Dupuy. I'm with the Niagara Lake Public Library and we are here for our Wednesday morning STEAM story time. Um, so thanks for joining us. It is just 11.01 now so we're going to wait a couple more minutes. This week what we're going to be looking at uh, reading a book about is a whale and his search for friendship um, and we're also going to be looking and talking about rainbows. And I have it here in my mouth. Yep, on camera, of course. <laughs> so um, just a couple of housekeeping things before we get started. Um, just like many of you, I'm home, doing this from home. Um, my boys are home, my husband's around this morning. Um, my dogs are sleeping, I'm looking at them right now. They might not stay that way. If we get interrupted, um, it's probably just what's gonna happen. It might happen. <laughs> um, also, my internet has, as you do for the last couple weeks, has been a little bit spotty. So if, um, if I drop, I will be back right away. Okay, so let's get right, you know what, let's get into the book because it is 11.02, yeah. Um, also, if you are joining us and um, you're not able to watch the whole video um, or you want to do some of the videos later, we will be posting these videos up on our YouTube channel and our IGTV after so you can watch them again. If you're an educator or a teacher watching and you would like to use them for your classroom, um, we'd love for you to use them for your classroom. Um, it'd be awesome if you let us know, but uh, they will be posted later. So don't feel like you have to record them or anything like that. We'll have them somewhere for you to watch. Okay, so this week's book um, for our STEAM story time is called A Small Blue Whale by Beth Ferry. Um, and pictures are by Lisa Mundorf. And this was published in 2017 by the Alfred A. Knopf R uh, Random House Publishing Company. Um, so thank you very much for letting us use this book today for our STEAM story time. And um, yeah, it's a really cute one. The pictures are beautiful. So let's get started. So this one is called A Small Blue Whale by Beth Ferry and Lisa Mundorf. A small blue whale sat in a silver sea. Wishing, wanting, waiting for a friend. Waiting was hard, but he didn't mind. He was sure a friend would be worth the wait. As the sun rose, he glimpsed a glint of gold followed by an inkling of orange and radiant ribbons of red. The colors were so beautiful that the whale wondered if this was what friendship looked like. The sun grew stronger. It was warm and steady. The whale wondered if this is what friendship felt like. <laughs> As he basked, he noticed a small pink cloud. Could this be the friend he'd been waiting for? Hello, he called. The cloud drifted across the sun and sent down a small sprinkling of raindrops. I agree, the whale said. It is rather warm today. As he licked the sweet cool drops, the whale thought that this must be what friendship tasted like. See him licking the raindrops there? I think it's a little bit glare. A little bit of glare from my light. The cloud billowed away. Wonderful idea, the whale said. I've always wanted to travel south. The whale and the cloud traveled together happily. The whale was sure this was what friends did. I love this page. They settled under a sky full of stars. Let's 
count them, the whale said. One, two. The clouds released one, then two, then hundreds of raindrops. The whale couldn't keep up. You're right, he laughed. There are too many to count. One morning, the sun shone squarely on the small pink cloud. A rainbow appeared. Mm, I love the rainbow. Look at how pretty that is. Can you see it? So did a trio of bouncing penguins. They leapt and swooped and laughed and whooped as they tried to catch the colors. The whale was sure. The whale was sure this is what friendship sounded like. He wanted to help. Isn't that what friends did? <laughs> We're trying to catch the rainbow, those little penguins. He heaved himself onto the ice. <clears throat> Hop on, he called. Wheezing the penguins as the whale flung them high into the sky, so close to the small pink cloud, who was swirling away. Wait, called the whale. He tried to follow, but he was stuck. The penguins clicked their bills, tapped their feet, shook their heads. One by one, they waddled away. A sad blue whale sat on the milky ice, wishing, waiting, oh, wishing, wanting, waiting for help. Poor whale, he's stuck on the ice. Then, one, then two, then hundreds of snowflakes floated down. Just as one, then two, then hundreds of penguins appeared. And what are they carrying? Can you guys see? They're carrying shovels. They scooped the snow, making a slippery slide. They pushed and pushed. Then they clambered aboard. We shouted the penguins. Free shouted the whale as he splashed into the sea. The penguins sent up an enormous cheer. The whale sent up a huge spray of thanks. The clouds sent down flurries of frozen confetti. <laughs> what is a frozen confetti? Snow, right? And the whale is using his blowhole to push the water out. That's how whales breathe, from the top of their head. We'll talk about that later. Finally, the whale knew exactly what friendship looked like, sounded like, tasted like, and felt like. The penguins helped him. He's made some friends. And it had definitely been worth the wait. <laughs> I love that book. The pictures are so lovely and calm and beautiful. So that was A Small Blue Whale by Beth Berry um, and pictures by Lisa Mundorf. And it was, again, published in 2017 by Alpha A Not Random House Publishing. So thank you again for letting us use that for our scene story time. So since we read about um, a little whale and finding some friends, and part of the story was about rainbows, we're going to be doing some whale activities and some rainbow activities. So before we get started with that, I'm just going to flip the camera around because all the stuff is going to be happening here. Oh, but you know what? I can show you. This is what we're going to make first. We're going to make a little whale puppet using probably materials you have in your house at home. Really easy stuff. So we're gonna make this tiny little whale puppet. So I'm gonna take the camera and I'm gonna flip it around and I'm going to try to leave it the right way this time instead of flipping it backwards. And hopefully that is the right way. I'll just get confirmation before I go too far. Although I think it looks okay. Yes. Actually, what I've done this week um, is I've used one of our iPads um, from the library and I'm able to um, see what I'm doing. So a lot of time I'm like, oh, I hope that looks good. I can actually see some stuff this time. So hopefully that means if you say hi's or shout outs or have any comments, I can read them at the exact same time as I'm teaching. They're not stuck on my phone like before. So we're learning. We're trying new things. It's exciting. Okay, so Steam Storytime banner. And what we're gonna get started with today is we're going to make um, a little, oops, our little whale puppet first. 
So this is what this little guy looks like. Yeah. So I used a bamboo skewer, or you can use any kind of stick that you find in your backyard. Um, I have some paper, some tissue paper, some paint, um, pencil scissors, some glue. There's a little bit, quite a few little um, things that are um, required for this, but it's so cute. And they make really cute gifts to give people. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piece of paper um, and you can make this puppet giant if you want. If you, if you wanna make a little tiny one like I'm making, you can do that. I had a little scrap of paper and see there's actually some stuff on the other side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold it this way so the ends meet like so. So I have this little card thing. This is going to be the inside of my whale so you can't see it and this is gonna be the outside that you can see. So the next thing we have to do is we're gonna draw a little whale body. And the way I like to think of a whale body, if I put that one there, is a teardrop with a rounded edge and then two more little teardrops at the end. So before you do your whale for your puppet, try drawing your whale on some paper for practice. Practice is always great. The only reason I know how to do a lot of the stuff I know how to do is because I practice and I practice and I practice. I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna go across to make that teardrop, and I'm gonna make a little tail, and then look, another teardrop here, and another teardrop here. Now, if your whale looks different than mine, is that okay? Totally okay, yes. Everyone's whale can look the way that they want it to be. So after I draw, um, you don't have to draw it on both sides because we have it folded, and what you can do is cut around your paper. So I'm actually using a cardstock. Um, it's a little bit um, heavier than regular paper. If all you've got is regular paper, that works too. You might just wanna double up the paper, but it's up to you. Or you know what works really well? Cardboard. I have lots of cardboard from like cereal boxes and cracker boxes and that kind of stuff. Um, so that would also work really, really well for a puppet. It'd be a little bit more sturdy. So also for the cutting part, um, if this is tricky, you can always ask an adult to help, right? Because scissors can sometimes be, be a little tricky and you don't wanna hurt yourself when you're using scissors. So we have our two pieces for our wheel. So see if I flip them over, you can see the green. Actually, I kind of like that green. <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna use that green side, just like that. But before we do anything else, we gotta paint our wheel. So to make the whale look like the one in the book, I tried to match the color as closely as I could, and I'll bring that here so you can see. Like that, so a little, it's the same, but not quite the same, and that's okay. I used a mixture of, green, of blue, sorry, and uh, blue and black, a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of black. And all I did was I moved some over here. I took a teeny, teeny little bit like that. Ooh, it's even hard to see and I made like a bluey gray. And all you have to do is paint the whale, just like so. Mm -hmm. And this can be as kind of messy as you want or as smooth as you want. I kind of like when some of my paintings have some, um, some messiness to them, uh, they add some texture and they add some interest like that. And whales, I don't know, if from pictures, I think whales look pretty smooth, um, but I've actually felt a dolphin before, and dolphin skin is not that smooth. It's actually kind of rough, um, and dolphins or whales are very similar um, in many ways. So I, you know, kind of picture that whale skin would be a little bit on the rougher side. Looks nice and smooth from far away, but maybe up close, it wouldn't be, because it would have these little things called barnacles on them, um, barnacles are like little tiny plants and animals that kind of grow, I think they're animals actually, that grow um, on the whale's skin. Yeah, and that sounds kind of weird, but that's how nature works sometimes, right? All these animals live together. It's called symbiosis. So, big word. <laughs> so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna let these dry for uh, just a little bit. And then look, I made a mess on my paper, but that's okay. So we need to make the stick that's gonna be the stick for our puppet. Now you can make this shorter if you want. Um, you can leave it long, but what is important, and you probably wanna ask an adult for this, is to cut off this pointy part. So I'm gonna cut off that just like that, okay? 
And you know what, since I made a really long one, I'm gonna make this one a little bit shorter. So just like so. So move that out of the way. And then what we're gonna do is flip over one side of our wheel. And I'm gonna use hot glue. If you don't have hot glue, that's okay. I'm just gonna use hot glue because it dries faster for the thing I'm showing you. Put a little bit there and then put your stick. And what I find sometimes works too is if you twist the stick, it makes a covering over top and glues everything together. So, one side of our puppet. Okay. So, whales, we saw in the book that whales actually can shoot water and air through something on the top of their head or their back. I think it's technically their head. Um, but that is called a blowhole and that's actually where whales breathe from. So they have a little hole on the top of their head or their back and their lungs are there and that's how they get the air that they need to dive down um, so that they can, they can live and dive really far and then they come back up and then they blow the water out at the surface and get more, um, more air. So to make that blow hole, because I think it looks pretty cute on this guy, um, we're gonna use some tissue paper. I only had white tissue paper. Um, so if you have a different color, that's fine too. This is your project. But what I find looks really cool, the way to kind of fold it is fold it in half like this to make a triangle-ish kind of shape. Fold it again and then fold it again and then pinch here. And this is where you can kind of pinch to get messy and then kind of fluff that up. Then you can use some glue and glue it right at the top there of the back of your wheel and stick that down. So it will look kind of like that, okay? So we have the two inside pieces for our puppet. So we're going to glue the rest of it together. So you're gonna take some glue and just go around everything like so. You can put as much or as little as you like. I like putting some in the middle too because it kind of holds everything together. And then we're going to stick that right on there. Push it all down. And voila, our little whale puppet. Now the only thing that we're missing are some details. So we have to do a eye, a mouth, and a little cheek. Cause our, I tried to make it like the whale that's in the book and that one has a little cheek. I think, you know what? I'm gonna think that all whales have cheeks. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> so I'm gonna do a little smile here. And if you look, the end of the smile and the eye line up just like that. Oh, I'm not quite dry, do you guys see that? So I'm gonna do that on the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna go here and do a little smile, and the eye lines up with the um, end of the mouth. And then we're gonna do a cheek. Now you can draw a little cheek. You can use your paintbrush end to do a little cheek here. This can actually give you a really cool, see if I dip it, you can do some little dots like that. But what I thought would look really cool and kind of gives it a nice little fluffy look to it is using a Q-tip. And I like to just brown the Q-tip in my hand a little bit, because sometimes they're really fluffy. And then you're going to dip. And that little cheek goes right there. And this little cheek goes right there. Okay, so there is my little whale puppet. <laughs> now you don't also thought that would be really cool. Um, if you have any like tinsel or um, like silver paper or even some like beads on a string and you wanna put them like at the end of your uh, whale, and you go like this, it would actually make it look like they were swimming through some water. So another little thing you can add to kind of elevate your puppet. But there we go, a little tiny whale puppet swimming across the camera. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this guy over here because he needs to dry. Um, because I don't want his cheeks to get all, all uh, smudgy. But since we made our whale puppet, let's talk about rainbows. So I have two things we're gonna do with, uh, with you today. We're going to be making a rainbow because if you, if you pay attention in the book, and I'll bring the book over, um, there is a certain order that colors are always in a rainbow. They don't just kind of show up everywhere. If you wanna make a rainbow that has colors that go anywhere, that's totally fine. Um, but in life, um, and in real life, and in like the science and exploration of colors, rainbows always have a certain order. So if we look at this one here, um, rainbows always go red, orange, yellow, 
green, blue, and violet. Yeah, and there's actually a color in between blue and violet that I will, will be doing. But any color you wanna make in on the planet um, is all in this rainbow, but they're always in the same order. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna move this little picture over here. Hopefully you guys can still see it. I think so. Hopefully I don't put it in the, in the uh, paint. And remember when I talked about painting on cardboard? I have a piece of cardboard and we are going to paint a rainbow together. The cool thing about this cardboard rainbow is if you have um, cotton balls or even any kind of like cotton batting, after you paint this rainbow, glue some cotton on the ends here. I didn't have any at home, otherwise I'd be doing that with you. <laughs> um, and it looks really cool like in a window or on a, on a shelf. Um, it's a really cute project, yeah. Okay, so let's start. The very first color on our rainbow on the outside of this one is going to be red. So we're gonna take some red paint and I'm going to do a red strip right along the top edge. And see how I'm just following? I'm not drawing this ahead of time. All I'm doing is following the outside of my rainbow cutout. And if you look, it's kind of like an arc shape, right? It's an arc that has a little tiny arc cut out of it. A little hat, like a little semicircle. So there is my first layer of my rainbow, so red. So yeah, we didn't have to draw this ahead of time. All we had to do is follow our shape and we're going to build it up as we go. So I'm gonna wash my brush. Now the next color is orange. So I'm gonna take some orange and we're going to follow that red. Yeah, and it's okay if it goes onto it a little bit. I'd rather see overlapping of paint than some cardboard peeking through, although I really like the look of painting on cardboard lately. It's a good adaptation I feel like I've made due to the circumstances of enjoying painting on cardboard. <laughs> it gives a really nice texture. So we have our orange, that's our second color in our rainbow. So we have red and orange. And let's see what the next one's gonna be. Can anyone look at the picture in the comments if you're there? Mention, it's going to be yellow. So we're gonna do some yellow. So we're gonna start here. And my yellow is a little bit see-through. So we might see some cardboard through that, but that's okay. Red, orange, and yellow. Now see how sometimes when I'm painting, I'm painting like this, and I do one straight long line? You can do that. But I find I have more control, if you're gonna be painting with me, um, to do like lots of little connections like this. See? It's like I'm sweeping the yellow paint across instead of doing one long line. It's a little bit easier to control, especially if you're learning how to paint. You can do lots of little lines. So there's our second, or sorry, our third color, which is yellow. Next one. If you look at our page here, our rainbow here, it is green. So we have a lovely bright shade of green. Yes, look at how much that stands out. So green is our next color on the rainbow, just like so. This is actually my son Frankie's favorite color, is green. Anything green is his favorite. And this is the fourth color of the rainbow, just like so. Now the next ones, the next color in the rainbow is blue. This is actually my son Sam's favorite color. So this is the fifth color of the rainbow. So we've done five colors. One, two, three, four, five is blue. My son Sam's favorite color is blue. Everything blue he loves. So this is a really nice blue too. And see how I'm doing the same shape as I'm building up my rainbow? And this is good for two reasons. One, I'm practicing making the same thing over and over again so I can get really good at it, right? And it's looking beautiful at the same time. But also, I'm learning that I can build up a painting and follow shapes without having to draw anything ahead of time. Yeah, it's a really cool way for some mastery of some, of some, um, of some skills, right? So in this rainbow here, this is where we get a little tricky. It goes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Now in between blue and purple, there's actually a special color called indigo. 
and I'm going to make some. So indigo is a little bit of blue and a little bit of purple mixed together. So it's like a bluey purple. So we're gonna add that today. Why not? We have a little bit of extra space. We're gonna add an indigo layer here. So I'm gonna add my fifth color or sixth color. Oh my goodness, sixth color. Just like so. If you're making a rainbow, do you have to add indigo? Nope, you do not. I just really like the color indigo and I'm always kind of sad when rainbows leave it out. So I'm gonna add it in. Yep, and I love it. See how it kind of, it's like that cool purple, half blue, half purple color that a lot of people see and they love, but they don't really know what it is, right? Mystery color. And our last color, this was my favorite color when I was little. I'm sure it's some of your favorite colors, uh, is our purple. Oh, so look, I started in the middle of my rainbow this time and I went down to the edges this way. So we have our colors of the rainbow. So we have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So you have just painted or watched me paint a rainbow with all the colors you need, exactly how you would see it in the sky. Um, now, because it's been rainy the last couple days, um, and well, it hasn't really been rainy, it's been kind of gray, but if there's rain and, a, and sunshine outside one day, look up in the sky, you might be able to see a rainbow because rainbows happen when water, um, sorry, when sunlight goes through water droplets and that's how we get rainbows after it rains. Okay. So I'm gonna move this rainbow over here. I'm gonna close the book. Oh, look, there's a rainbow on the back. I guess I could have just used that one. I'm gonna put this one here. So for our last activity today, talking about rainbows, we did a little bit about whales. We painted a rainbow. We talked about the colors that are in a rainbow. We're gonna do something called rain. We're gonna build a rainbow. We're gonna watch a rainbow form, not a real one. I can't make it rain, um, but I can show you how to build one using paper towel, water, and some markers. Now, I have to run really quickly. Um, <laughs> I have to run really quickly to the kitchen because I think I use my paper towel to clean something, not thinking that I'm gonna need it right now. So I'll be right back. Oh, thanks, Nicholas. Yes, actually, look, my hands are pretty, oh, look, I got a little bit of purple and red, but that's okay. I kind of like those colors. Oh, and there's some blue. Thanks, though. Thank you for your concern. <laughs> I'll be right back, guys, and she's a paper towel. About that. Okay, so I have some paper towel here um, and what I'm going to do is cut it so that it fits between two jars. So I have these two small jars. They fit really nicely on the camera. If you have bigger jars like this, um, you can totally use that. Maybe not with paint water, but these are little tiny, you know, tiny mason jars. And I'm going to make sure that this piece is going to fit here. So I'm going to measure it right there. I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to cut a piece just like so. Yep, just like that. Okay, so I have my piece of paper towel that's gonna fit in two of these, and water likes to travel along paper towel and get into paper towel, right? We use it to wipe up spills because it's absorbent. So that's gonna help us create a rainbow today. So we need the colors in a rainbow. So I need some red, Let's see if you know what's done with me. Orange, what's next? Yellow, um, blue, no, green, blue. And we're not gonna do indigo because I don't have an indigo marker. That's exactly kind of what I was talking about before, but I have purple. So we have red, orange, green, oops, nope. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Okay, so we have our rainbow here. It's very colorful. I like the way it looks today on the screen. <laughs> so what you need to do is close to the end of your paper towel ends, we're gonna make a tiny rainbow. So I'm gonna go red right here and then across, do some red there. Then I'm gonna do orange, because orange is next. I'm gonna make a little spot of orange and a little spot of orange there. See what I'm doing? I'm kind of doing a pattern. Yellow, yellow, and what's next? There's green. Green, oh, I almost forgot this side. 
screen. So this um, experiment is actually very similar to that one that you can do with Skittles and milk. Capillary reaction. yeah. So, oh, Frankie's having a grand old time today. Um, what's our last color? Yellow, or purple, oh my goodness, I'm thinking in contrasts. I was painting in contrast yesterday. So across the color wheel from yellow is purple. So my brain was already stuck there. So I've made a two little rainbows on the end of paper towels. And now I need something that's going to join them in the middle. So I have some water and I'm just gonna pour a little bit in here and a little bit in here. So you want some water in both of your containers. Okay. So this project usually works out, but just in case it doesn't, I made one ahead of time and this is like what we're going to make. But let's see if it works. Cause does science work all the time? It doesn't, nope. And that's okay because we can always try it again. Okay, ready? So what we're gonna do is we're going to take the one end of your paper towel and sometimes if, it, if I cut it a little bit too big, I just cut off the edges like so, just so that it fits a little bit better in the container. And remember, we're using paper towel because it's absorbent and it likes to suck up water and suck up liquids. And the markers I used are washable. So they're actually made mostly of water. So if water's already in the markers, I wonder what's gonna happen if we add some more water. Now let's see. So we're gonna put this in here like that. So the end is just in there and the end is just in here and we're going to pull this down. <gasps> Do you guys see it? The rainbow is starting to grow. So let's see. So what it's doing is the ink and you want to have a little dip here and the ink is going, being absorbed with the water along the paper towel and they're going to meet in the middle and we are creating a rainbow out of paper towel and washable ink and water using capillary action. And look, we have built, we've created a rainbow using some really cool science experiments. Isn't that so cool? And it happens pretty fast. When I first did this experiment, I thought it was gonna take a little bit too long, um, but look, we've made a rainbow right before our very eyes. And we didn't even have to wait for a rainstorm. <laughs> so, if that's something you'd like to try, I would love to see the rainbows you make. Now you don't have to just make it um, in the proper rainbow color, so red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. You can make this however you want. It looks really, really neat. But we're using capillary action, so that means the water's traveling through something absorbent um, and taking some stuff with it, which is the ink, for a ride, and we're created a really cool rainbow. Okay, so thank you everybody for joining me today. Um, we read a book about friendship um, and whales and rainbows. We made a little whale puppet, just like so. We painted a rainbow together. We talked about the colors that are in a rainbow and we made our very own capillary action rainbow. So thanks again for joining me. Um, hopefully we'll see you again next Wednesday and hopefully you have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday today. Um, if you're just watching this or you would like to use it in a class or watch it again later, we will be uploading these to YouTube um, and to our IGTV afterwards. Um, hi, Nicholas. Thanks for joining us again and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday and we will see you next week, everybody. Okay, bye.